I'm Joseph Leming, and I'm here playing this 17th century Italian virginals at the Horneman Museum. I'm starting with a piece by Merula, and it's an intonazione, which is a sort of prelude or introduction. And it was used as a way of setting the tone or setting the key of a piece. And if you uh, hear a choir today in a concert, for example, you might hear an organist give the chord for them to start on. In the Renaissance, they, they weren't ashamed of it. They, um, they would have played um, with, a, with a full organ and incorporated themes and explored the tonality in all the surrounding areas. And out of this, you get the, the style called the Internazione. And I'm then following that with a piece by Merulo. And this is a um, a canzone, and it's which is uh, just means a song, basically a song for um, a choir to sing or uh, a collection of voices. And it became popular in Italy in the in the 16th century to intabulate these songs. That means arranging it for a keyboard instrument or for other instruments, and then adding your own ornamentation. So they would slow down the song and then add their own ornamentation as you go, and. Merulo's uh, canzones, um, intabulated for the organ, are a perfect example of how you might make your own ornamentation on these songs.
Over in Rome, the Internazione style had become so advanced that it had become a genre in its own right called the Toccata. And Frescobaldi's Toccatas represent the most advanced stage of this um, in Italy in the 17th century. And in a Toccata, you see, you can see the composer almost improvising down on the page, taking unexpected turns of harmony, changing time signature, just playing scales, whatever it likes. Um, and it's not, it's not so much a coherent piece in itself. And in fact, Frescobaldi says that you can start and finish whatever you want. There's no need to get to the end even. Um, so it's more of an act of exploring the instrument, exploring different musical styles within one piece.
The next piece is by Trabacci, who worked in Naples. This piece is a recercar, which is sort of the opposite of the toccata. Um, it's not incoherent, it's a much more strict idiom, so it's in four voices throughout, exactly in four parts, and it has a strict beat to it. This one has an opening section and then goes into triple time, and in the third section you get the theme uh, in overlapping entries between the different voices.
I'm now playing a collection of dances um, from the 1550s by Benduzzi. He published this Opera Nova di Balli, which is a new collection of dances, and they were explicitly stated for any instrument to play. So uh, that could have been on a keyboard instrument or with separate instruments, and they were in four voices. So I've entabulated them here and added my own ornamentation.
So I've always loved the music from the 16th and 17th centuries when I've been playing the organ and the harpsichord. I've recently started studying in, in Basel in Switzerland and I've been exploring all of this uh, Italian music. A lot of it's sometimes quite hard to get hold of, but um, when you do, it's very, very rewarding. And there are, there are all these different genres to, to, to explore within this repertoire. And um, an instrument like this is really the perfect thing to, to get in touch with uh, this, uh, this particular style. So much of this music was written just for generally for a keyboard instrument. And often, especially in printed music, they would say you can play it on any instrument. And the logic of that is obvious because then you could increase sales. And the, the organ was a very important instrument, probably one of the most highest regarded instruments of the time. And, but you can play a lot of this music on any instrument. But what you have to do is you have to adjust your way of playing. So Frescobaldi says that if you were to play the, a plucked instrument like a virginals or harpsichord in the same way as you play the organ, then the instrument might sound empty. And so you have to, um, what the player has to do is find ways of keeping the instrument resonant. And that's one of the most rewarding parts of playing this repertoire is that you get to adjust things based on the instrument, the room you're playing in, and you have a lot of creativity in this regard. So there are three main ways in which the music of this time was written down. The, um, the first is what um, those dances at the end that I played were written down in, and that was in part books. So you have four separate books and each has one part of the music. And so that's a very convenient scenario if you have four separate instrumentalists playing one line each and they all have their own part, like you would find in a modern orchestra today. Um, if you want to play them on the keyboard, you then have to uh, either memorize it very slowly by working out how the parts fit together, or you have to make your own uh, edition in uh, something like modern notation as we use today, um, or a keyboard tablature. Um, the, the next way is to, to use um, what we call open score format, where you have these four separate lines of music, but instead of having them in one book, you have them placed on top of each other. And that means that if you're a keyboard player, you can read them all at the same time and actually play from this. And this was, this was the highest regarded way of uh, writing down uh, the music, especially polyphonic music, because it shows all of the details of the music that you need to see. The, the third way is uh, the Italian keyboard tablature, which is the most similar to what we use now for writing down keyboard music. So you have two separate staves like you would find in modern piano notation. The amount of lines in those staves is a bit different, but that's the closest um, to what we have today. So the most common tuning you find of um, keyboard instruments in the 16th and 17th centuries is what we call mean tone tuning. And today on a, on a piano, we divide all of the semitones, so the distance in pitch between each key equally. Um, and, but on these instruments, that isn't the case. So some of the semitones are large and some of the semitones are small. And the result of this is that you get some very resonant harmonies. So chords with thirds in are very resonant and they, they actually make the wood of the instrument sing a lot more than if it was in um, the equal temperament which we use now. Um, but another effect that you get is uh, the, the different colors you get from the distance between the different semitones. And um, composers played with this in, in what they call the chromatico style. So, Two of the pieces I play today have the word chromatico in the title. 
And this meant that they were playing with these, when the notes were close together, they had these different intervals and different colors. So the first theme of the uh, Trabacci Ricercar starts on one note and it goes down in these uneven semitones. And um, it's a sort of exploration of all the different colors that you get from this tuning. So yeah, it's very, it's very rewarding. There's all sorts of colors that you don't get if you're playing a modern piano.